We did it. We did it. Wow. What a week. <laughs> Let's get this thing started, baby. Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans? Welcome to the one, the only, Tusk Talk with Ty live show here on a, uh, not a not a beautiful Wednesday, but like a beautiful Wednesday. You you guys get it. You get it, right? We get, uh, we, we got John Calipari. He is, he is the head hog. That is, that is enough said. John Calipari, it is official. He is the head hog. Incredible. Mm, golly. If I had my luscious, long brown locks, I would, you know, do the whole, the head fling thing. It is unbelievable. Did not think, especially how things look to be going last week. We all thought Chris Beard, like this has got to be a lock with Chris Beard. And then we went through that whole thing. We all did together. You know, that's all anybody's talking about. Oh, what's, what's going on with Beard? And then Beard was, you know, not a thing or had turned it down or whatever. Whatever happened, happened. And, of course, the Will Wade rumors. And then, I mean, the list just goes on and on for a few names. It felt like, well, maybe there's something here. Um, Tang at Kansas State, maybe he was an option. These He's getting an extension to his contract. We just didn't know what to think. And uh, yet, here we are, several days later, after, you know, doubting the university, doubting Hunter Yerchek, doubting the Board of Trustees, doubting that they would ever, that they would, they would ever make a move like this. Well, to be fair, it wasn't necessarily them, though, was it? It was, it was Mr. John Tyson. Yeah, buy your chicken nuggies in bulk from Tyson. <laughs> Although I don't think he has anything to do with the company anymore, right? Didn't he sell his shares or something? I don't know. Whatever. He's obviously a proud Arkansan, and uh, he wants Arkansas basketball to be great again, and that's exactly what what uh, he's helping to facilitate. We know the NIL money is going to be legit. I think it's, what, rumored of $3 million or more? Just insane. And now there's rumors, and again, I, I don't really like addressing rumors because it could be complete nonsense, but I know you guys are grown-ups. You know this. I could just tell you, as always, what? Take it with a grain of salt. But there are there's some smoke out there, and it might have been from a couple people on Twitter that um, that have quite the following, that are Razorback fans that have quite the following that are making the claim that the Walmart Walmart might be getting involved. You know, I've said this for years, and I know you guys know this. I think some people outside of Northwest Arkansas forget to realize this, and it's easy to do. If you're here, it's in your face all the time, right, in NWA. If you're in Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, whatever, um, Farmington, all the way to, to the other side, to West Fork, you know, you know what's going on in NWA and the kind of money that's here. And I know most of the state knows this, although I have had talks with people outside of NWA who just for some reason think there's no money here. Or maybe we, you know, it's just kind of been nonsense. It's BS that they really have money that's willing to spend towards the university or that maybe it's all just Wal- it's all just Walmart people and you know what, they're all transplants anyways. Why do they care about about Northwest Arkansas and about the Razorbacks, about the state of Arkansas. Well, then you have the Tyson family, right? You've, I mean, we know, right? The George, the J- George's chicken. You got J.B. Hunt. Obviously, the Waltons, I think, are still connected. Obviously, Bud Walton Arena. I mean, my God, his name is on the building. Or, I mean, yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Bud Walton. But uh, so finally, we get to this point where. It, it it became especially lately, right after Musselman, after all this was unfolding. Where is the Arkansas money then? Where is that NWA money? Now I know it's easy to spend other people's money, and that's exactly what a lot of us were doing. We're all doing. It's real easy to say, why aren't you? Why aren't you throwing? Why aren't you doing everything? If you're a millionaire, a billionaire, whatever, it's real easy for us to spend their money. You know, it's real easy to do that, but. I, I kind of understand it, right? Like, where has it really been? All this talk about the NIL and J.B. Hunt, what's going on with the Hunt family. And yet the Hunt family was 
as far as we know, doing their part, right? Trying to trying to get things going through NIL. Again, this just goes to show you what what the state is capable of, what the money here is capable of doing. And uh, I get the skepticism before this. I get it. Like, you, you know, you look at Sam Pittman's, and we're going to have to talk about that too. We're going to have to talk about football. And I know I, I wasn't going to talk about spring camp because I was going to wait till Friday to really, you know, get to that. And we still will, I, you know, but I just want to talk a little bit about what does this do for football, good or bad? What kind of pressure does this put on football uh, from a from a coach's perspective? When you're Sam Pittman and you're sitting here, you're over here like you're praying to God you can at least break into the – with these last five scholarships that you have to work with, I think that's still the number. What what are we going to do? I mean, you get all this NIL money piled into basketball. What are we going to do for football? And I think sometimes it, it takes buy-in. I, and that's where that whole thing about us spending other people's money, real easy to do, right? Let's be real. Let's be completely real. What are you most excited for in 2024, football or basketball now? Um, and I would even argue, hell, if you would have brought any other name, any other name in basketball, not quite John Calipari's level, but I mean like any kind of coach that you would think of that Arkansas would end up hiring if they didn't go with Calipari, I, I still would expect most of you to be more stoked for basketball than football. Now, Cal, Perry, Cal puts this thing over the moon. This has skyrocketed Arkansas to a level of national media attention like I don't think we've seen since, I, I don't know. I mean, I remember Petrino. Petrino, when he was hired here, it was crazy. But it was also the circumstances in which he was leaving Atlanta. Remember, when he, when he left Atlanta prematurely, he left before the season was over with and he came to Fayetteville. That, that was a part of it. Also, he was... He was the best offensive mind in all of football. At least then, that was the that was the narrative, and I think there was probably some truth to that. We saw it year three and year four. We saw a little bit of it in year one and two. We really saw it year three and year four, 2010, 2011. Nothing like this, though. Nothing like this. This is unbelievable. And no, Arkansas is not a blue blood school, but I've said all along they are a I think right now they're ahead of, I mean, it seems easier to say now than ever, they're ahead of schools like Illinois, who if you look at their if you look at their postseason success, it's not that far from Arkansas, right? Louisville, I mean, what, is, what have you done for me lately? Meanwhile, Arkansas made three straight Sweet 16 runs, back-to-back Elite Eights. They had one bad year, and now they're moving on to John Calipari. That's the difference between us and those two schools right now. Those are typically the other schools. When you talk about in the path of top 10 in college basketball, those are typically some of the two schools that you have to you, that get looked at first before Arkansas. I think now this puts you in that conversation as one of the top 10 jobs in the country. We'll see what happens four or five years down the road. We'll see how this all unfolds. Cal Perry, six, he's 65, right? How long does he coach? I think these are valid questions. You guys know me. I'm not going to sit here and sunshine pump all the time, but this is an absolutely this is a this is a hire I just didn't think would ever happen here. I mean, I knew after Musk, like okay, they should be able to go out and get a Chris Beard. Well, you know, they didn't, right? They okay. Well, then what's next, right? Then you start. We start going down the laundry list of names. John Calipari seems so far out into outer space. It just didn't even seem something feasible. And, and despite knowing that he had that Jimbo Fisher contract where if he were to leave, there would be no buyout, right? I mean, despite knowing what we knew at the time, I still didn't think he could have had a horrible contract. And I still wouldn't have put him, you know, I still wouldn't have put him in favor for 2024. Not, not at the beginning of all this. Certainly not. All right. Oh my gosh. There's so much to discuss. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Um, if you don't make the tourney first season, fans will be calling for him to be fired, says Johnny Jones. Okay, Johnny, but see, here's the thing, though. Of course there's going to be those fans. I think some people have a hard time. I think some people have a hard time. They see the minority on Twitter as as being the majority. Typically, the loudest, the, the minority is the loudest, right? Yeah, you're going to have some batshit crazy fans. I mean, listen... There were people that wanted Musk on after not advancing beyond Sweet 16 last year. 
I mean, I, I remember I, that was the saying. Not, it was a few people, but it wasn't the majority. That wasn't the actual narrative. That's that same narrative that the media was using. Who was it that said that? That uh, Arkansas had pushed Musselman, the fans had pushed Musselman out the door. That wasn't the case, and we all know it's – so don't buy into that bullshit. Oh, see, look how bad the fans are. Bro, that's everywhere. That is everywhere. That's at every school. Fan is short for fanatic, and it's not exclusive to Arkansas, okay? Just let's put that on pause. But I hear you. you you're right, John. There will be those crazy fans who want, who want him gone if he doesn't make the tournament year one. You're right. But, again, that's going to be the minority. The vast majority of Arkansas fans, I think they're pretty reasonable for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong. They are rabid. Uh, let's scroll up here. Let's read some of chat. Beard refused the job because he refused. Yeah, there was so there was a apparently there was a no compete clause. That's that's what we keep being told. That's the narrative around why that fell apart. Then why the only problem I have with that then then wipe it like you're gonna you're gonna wipe that off the contract. You're gonna wipe that off the offer. Like okay, well fine, I'll throw that out the door. So I don't know that it was just that. I don't. It had to be more than just the because that's not hard. I don't know why that would be the final nail in the coffin for Hunter Yurchak to, to then just not even try to compete or to go back and offer him again. Uh, Arkansas is broke. They can't afford anything. That is, that's been the narrative for, for a while. I think it has to do with the confidence that these, that these big spenders have in the head coach. It's the confidence or lack thereof. Maybe that's why they're not spending their money. Hey, shout out to direct service overhead, the garage door company. They are this show's, Sponsor. They offer same day services, quality parts, and affordable outcomes. Hundreds of five star reviews, free estimates. They can come out, come out and look at your door and tell you what's going on. Maybe you've got something going on with the pulley system, whatever that thing is. The thing with the chain that's really loud when it opens up your door. Uh, but they could they could take a look at that for you and just tell you what's going on. And and then uh, yeah, you're gonna want to sign up for them. You're gonna want to be a part of that. They're awesome. I can I can vouch. 501-244-3667. Give them a call today. They operate out of Central Arkansas and in Northwest Arkansas. They have affordable outcomes. They've got you covered. Travis Ford and the boys over at DSO, baby. Direct service overhead. They got you. Moneyball, big dogs, resurrecting hog fans. This is uh, Nick Futiu. Futiu. Fuchio. I don't know. Uh, Cal singing, St- uh, Stevie wonder sign sealed, delivered. I'm yours. <laughs> Kentucky fans. Who you going to get? That is indeed what they're doing in, in, uh, Lexington today. I, I don't know what they're, I don't know the latest on their search, but you, I don't, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't, I don't feel sorry for him one bit. Good morning, Ty. What's going on, Hoyt? How you doing? Do you think the Waltons are on board now? Elijah uh, Dilday wants to know. That is the that is some smoke around that. I can't confirm. I, I don't know. Uh, but it sounds like that is a possibility. Cameron Gray, what's going on? Hey, make sure you guys, again, like, share. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We're growing. I mean, you guys are – I mean, how hyped are you now with an empty roster – an empty roster, and yet people already think Arkansas might have a shot <laughs> next year simply because of Calipari and because of the uh, NIL. I'm reading this con- is contact is seven, not eight million, says Johnny Jones. So this is what I have. Where is it? Let me pull it up. Uh, yeah, I've got him at seven. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll get this confirmed throughout the rest of the week. I'm sure we'll know more about it today. It's a five-year contract through April 30th, 2029. Can add two rollover years based on NCAA tournament appearances, which would get him through 2031. Yeah, $7 million is what I have seen. But it obviously, there's there's more offers within the contract. A $1 million signing bonus, 500000 retention bonus each year, one-time bonuses included for Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, and the National Championship. So, obviously, that's a one-time bonus, but I'm sure that they – if they want – let's say next year, all right, knock on wood. Okay, you hear me. I'm knocking on wood. 
Uh, let's say next year he does all these things, right? Obviously, if you make a Final Four run, then you've gotten through the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, and the Final Four, you, and, and he wins the whole thing. He wins the national title. I'm sure at that point the extension would then probably add that back in. I don't know why they just make it a one-time thing. I guess – I mean, I guess it makes the most sense. you got to get there first, right? you got to walk before you can run. But maybe, uh, maybe that's how that works with the extension. Okay, well, you did that all in one year. You know, so then we're going to add, you know, an extension. We're going to add all that back in. So, uh, has there been a bigger bigger hire in Razorback history? No. No, I, I don't think so. I really don't. I, again, I know Petrino, I mean, it was insane when Bobby Petrino came up. I, I you know, that was crazy. Again, I've told you guys before, I have never felt the electricity like that, you know, knowing that you grabbed this guy who was in the NFL, who was coaching the Falcons. We know what he did as an OC. We know what he did at Louisville. Like, and then he was coming here, right? And the electricity was in the air. Back then, you know, it took you two, three years to build a team. But uh, now, I don't know. I'm going to be, I'm going to try to make it into Fayetteville today. We got an email, if it'll load up for me. Um, we got an email today. We've got an event starting. The doors are going to open for the public at 5 p.m. inside Bud Walton Arena. And the public introduction is going to be at 6 p.m. Then we're going to have a press conference with Cal Perry at 6.30. So we're I, this is open to the public. I'm going to try if I think I can go, if I think I can get there before, like, I don't know, I got because I got to pick up my kids. And then by the time I'm here and it takes me 30 minutes to get there, I don't know that I can make it. But I'm going to try. I'd love to go. I'd love to go be a part of that. Um, I don't know. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hudson's here to pick up his kids at noon today. I can already hear my school, my kids' school. Uh, we don't know why, but he's checking the kids out a little early today. I got somewhere important to be. Someone's got to pick up my kids. You guys don't have a busing system. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I want to make this. This feels... Maybe tell me if I'm going too far with this. This feels like a once in a lifetime type of of an event at the University of Arkansas. Like how they've never hired a name like this. Listen, this is his resume. Okay, he is scrolling on up here, looking at his wiki page. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He's been the he's been named the Naismith College Coach of the Year three times, 1996, 2008, and 2015. Uh, and he's he was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015. Also, he's coached. Well, he's been an assistant in a few places. Kansas was his first job. Uh, as a uh, as an assistant, an associate assistant from 1982 to 1985. Then he was at Pittsburgh as an assistant from 85 to 88. Then he was the head coach at UMass. And it's not like he was there for four or five years, turned him around and left. He was there from 88 until 96, so eight seasons. And then he went on to coach the New Jersey Nets. Then he was a uh, an assistant for the Philadelphia 76ers. Boo! Go, go Celtics. And then he went and coached Memphis for nine years. We all know what he – we're going to go over what he did. And then, obviously, at Kentucky from 09 to 2024 to the 09 to the 2023-2024 season. It's not like this guy hops around, unlike the last guy. It's not like he just hops around from job to job. They like him. Have you all heard some of the stories about him? No, I don't want to – again – I'm sure there's some not-so-great experiences with, with him, with Coach Cal. I'm sure there are. But what I heard this morning from Clay Henry, listening to those guys on the morning rush, shout-out to Ty Richardson and the boys, Tommy Kraft, uh, what they said, or, or what uh, Clay Henry said, was that this guy apparently, he's a big Catholic. Shout-out to the Catholics in chat. He gives to the local Catholic organization, so he, he, gives, he puts money back into the area. Former players love this guy. He's a when he's there, wherever he's at, he's he's a local celebrity. Even in a place like Lexington, Kentucky, we all know he's a national. So let's be real; he is one of the biggest names in all of college athletics, not just basketball. Um, but he's a devout Catholic. 
all that stuff. Again, I'm sure you know how this works. Kentucky's going to start digging up dirt on him and just to throw a bunch of stuff out there on Twitter. I'm sure that stuff will come, whatever. But it is pretty cool to hear. I mean, listen, I don't know that we're a, a real Catholic rich area. I know East Springdale into Tawny Town, you know, you've got some, you've got the, the Catholics in that part of the, the area. But uh, I'm sure he's going to be an active member in the, in the area. Sounds like he's going to give back a little. And apparently when you're in the room with him, he's just such a really nice guy. And he has that, that Northeast kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it into words, but you know, he just apparently lights up any room that he walks into and he's got that like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm coach Cal. Hey, all right. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. You know what I mean? Like that kind of, that whole thing about him being from the Northeast. Um, he's actually from, uh, Pennsylvania. I did not know that. I, for some reason I thought he was from New York. I really thought he was from, from New York, but he's from, uh, a little town, I guess in Pennsylvania. So he is, a, he's definitely a salesman. If there's anybody, along with all the accolades, who can help push NIL, I mean, can you think of anyone bigger and better? <laughs> I mean, if the Walds are going to get involved, why not? If the Hunts are going to get more involved, hopefully with football, why not? Now it's like this guy comes in and he's bringing Tyson with him. Or maybe it's the other way around. Tyson's bringing Cal with them. You know, you've got to feel like if you're a major donor, all right, okay. Hunter, you check the board. Everyone just made me feel a lot better, and I have a lot more confidence moving forward with the University of Arkansas. Who knows what Cal does, right? I mean, we gotta, we've got to see it, and, and I know year one there's going to be pressure, especially in the era of NIL and the transfer portal. There's going to be pressure for him to go out and grab the biggest names. I get it. Let's look at what he's done at UMass. He got them to, uh, of course, you know, his first year he didn't have any postseason. Then his year two, year three, he got uh, he got UMass to the NITs. And then 91-92, he gets to the Sweet 16, a couple of round 32 appearances the next two years after that, an Elite Eight, and then a Final Four, which I believe got scrubbed. So just, again, I, I don't want to fully I, – I told you there's some dirt out there, and I guess that 95-96 that UMass team did get that year scrubbed. But they did go 15-1 and one in conference play. At Memphis, he went on some pretty nice runs. Ran into a little bit of trouble there as well. In 2007-2008, he had a 38-2 and two record. I vaguely remember that team. Uh, undefeated in, uh, in conference play over there in the Conference USA uh, in 2008-2009. They, they were runner-up that year, and then the following year they were in the Sweet 16. So one year was scrubbed. The next year he goes right back to the Sweet 16. The two years prior to that, there's no – there's no trouble with the NCAA, and he makes back-to-back Elite Eights. Um, I mean, he just every year he's there, he gets them in postseason, although the, the three of those years at Memphis, they were NIT appearances. Now, you fast-forward to Kentucky in 09, year one. Year one, 09, 2010. He does exactly what you would expect a coach to do, a big-time coach at Kentucky to do. He goes 35-3, and 14-2 and in conference play, finishes first in the East, and uh, he goes to uh, Kentucky. Goes to the Elite Eight. The fi- the next year, they don't do as well in the regular season. They actually struggle a little bit. They go ten and six in conference. So four more losses in conference play. A few more losses overall. Twenty twenty nine and nine. But they make the Final Four. And then we all know eleven and twelve. They made the uh, the two thousand eleven two thousand twelve season. They are champions. The year after that, they make the NIT. I do remember that year because I remember how. Uh, not how surprising it was that the champions don't make the NCAA. That was kind of the talk of the town. That was all over radio. I remember that. Of course, we also know what happened in 2012 as well. But uh, this was the 12-13 season. So, uh, and then they go back the next year. They're runner up. They go back to the Final Four. They get to the round of 32 and 15 and 16, uh, or the 15 and 16 season. Excuse me. Elite Eight, Sweet 16, Elite Eight. Since COVID. He has not advanced beyond the round of 32. Now, this is what Kentucky fans are talking about. Okay, 2018-19 season, you go 30-7, and 15-3 overall conference record. You finish first in the conference, or excuse me, uh, uh, second in the, in the conference, 15-3, 30-7. and 
You make the Elite Eight, but then the next year you get canceled by COVID, which was a really good team, by the way. Uh, don't know if they would have made a good run in the tournament or not because it got canceled due to COVID. But then the year after COVID, they don't make a – they finish eighth in the league. They don't make postseason play. 21-22, they make the round of 64. They make to the round of 32 the year after that. And then obviously this last year they don't get out of the first round. Um, so, yeah, Kentucky fans – this is why people believe that it's good for both sides. This is going to elevate Arkansas's identity, right? You go from Musselman, who's who was not anywhere near the 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 hype machine that is Coach Cal, but you got you 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 saw what happened. I mean, three straight Sweet Sixteen runs of back uh, and back to back Elite Eights. That's pretty phenomenal. And I know some people forget, especially the younger crowd, Arkansas has not advanced to the Sweet 16 in the 2000s. That's not happened. It's been a while. It's been since uh, Nolan's final years that you made a run to the Sweet 16 and must did it three straight years. Again, back-to-back Elite Eights. This last year, I still think was just I, I don't know. I don't know if it was a fluke. I don't I don't know that he's – that everyone – you know, the narrative was that everyone's caught up to Musselman. I don't know. I don't buy that. I think Musselman would have been able to correct it. I really do. I will say I'm a fan of him, at least what he could do on the floor. Um, however, it just seems so much more obvious now that he ruffled a lot of feathers. It seems like to me, and again, this isn't anybody coming to me telling me this. It just seems like, and you guys can tell me if you differ. But how is it that you you lose Musselman to USC, and some of the rumors were there's something not right with NIL, and you bring in Cal, you bring in Cal, and now there's rumors everywhere that not only are you going to have uh, Tyson's three million for NIL. You're going to have more access. There's going to be more NIL. There's going to be more pumped into it, assuming that that's all that those rumors are correct. If you're Musselman, you got to be pissed. If you're if you're Eric Musselman, you got to be pissed. That's one of the reasons a lot of us thought he was going to USC. Well, their their NIL is just bottomless, right? I mean, when you consider who they are, you know, even though UCLA is right there, you know, you, you've got some you've got some competition within uh, not that far from your own university. So, I, yeah, we've got um, – it makes you wonder just a little bit, just what is going on within IL and why can't that happen for football? And we're going to talk about Pittman here in just a second. Uh, again, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Um Cowboys don't complain. He's going to come in and he wants to uh, he wants to be a wet blanket. But let's hear what he has to say. Scrubbed at UMass, one year scrubbed at UMass. By the way, that doesn't. What does that do to the rest of his time at UMass? Scrubbed at Memphis, one championship in fifteen years with uh, with thirty five first round draft picks. The most overpaid, overhyped coach in college basketball. I like the idea of a coach. Like, how do you? What's your best what's your your best route? Like when you when you bring in a coach, the first question is always, it used to be before the portal, how well can you recruit? Cal gives you a shot. That's why that's where some of this hype is coming from. Yeah, he's not had a lot of success the last few years, and that's at, there's absolutely some truth to that. Kentucky fans not real thrilled about how that's all panned out. But I think a coach, if, if there's a if there's a path to make a good run, it always starts with recruiting. And that's his bread and butter. He gives you a shot, and he's a good basketball coach. I mean, you don't have the accolades. You know, I, I don't know that every year at UMass he was just stock stockpiling that level of talent. Well, we know he wasn't, and yet he still had some fantastic runs at UMass. Uh, and the same with Memphis. He gives you a shot with his recruiting alone. And then you add in the coaching acumen that he has. So you can see where the, the excitement's coming from. And there's going to be a wet blanket here or there. And, and sometimes they have a good point. You can't overlook everything, right? Uh, let's be real. Cal would have probably won it in 2020 had they, had they not canceled the tournament. That was a really good team. I don't know how far they would have gone. But that was a really good team. 
Uh, us Kentucky fans are just warning one fan base to another. He fooled us. Don't let him fool y'all. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's it's already, you know, I mean, he's he's here, right? I mean, it's already happened. We're just going to have to buckle up and see how it unfolds. I, I a, a, a new place, right, a new job in an area that he's familiar with, in an arena he's very familiar with, in a fan base I think he gets, obviously coaching at Kentucky. He understands. I mean, I know he's a Northeast guy, but I think he gets the South. Definitely can get the recruits, though. This is awesome loss and clips. Absolutely can get the recruits, and that's the thing. Now you got to build a staff, right? I hope. I don't know of, of Musta's former staff how much who's going to stay or who's going to whatever. I hope he can keep Ronnie Brewer. I really do. I, I And I know from what I understand, he is still beloved in this state with coaches. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I have heard this from people. He is beloved by, by local coaches. I really hope they can keep Ronnie Brewer on staff. Um, I'll dim, dimwit be watching Arkansas versus Kentucky game next, next year. Okay. You, all right. you you deleted that comment. Voice, voice to chat will get you in trouble. Bo- uh, Bud Walton will be electric tonight. Says heartbroken hog. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, I don't know that there's a name. There's not one. There's not a name bigger, and there's not a name that's going to draw this kind of attention. I mean, guys, you were – you Arkansas was mentioned everywhere. And the fact that – you had the national championship game, and and that's what people were talking about online. You were trending. Cal leaving Kentucky, certainly trending. But you were a part of all of that. Arkansas is a really good job. Top 10, top 12 job. Feels like Cal, him just coming here, it puts you in the top 10. Like, you get someone of that of that caliber, that's S tier. When you, when you look at, don't tell me the last few years, look at the body of work, that's S tier, man. That is electric stuff, what he's done at previous jobs. It just, I don't know that you could have done better. Now, long term, who stacks up from 24 and on, right? When you're looking at Beard, when you're looking at Nate Oates, you know, you could look around the rest of college basketball outside of the SEC. Uh, what about Tang at Kansas State? How does he stack up at a play in, in, in the conference that they're in? How do they stack up from here on out? Who has more success? Well, again, I think the thing that separates the U of A, and it's not to say that those other schools don't have money. Obviously, Alabama has money. Ole Miss has a little bit of money. We know they're NIL. They've killed it on their NIL front. But it's not just Cal. I think a lot of people are making that mistake. Oh, well, yeah, look at the last few years, Ty. Cal is just Cal. Was he – I mean, Kentucky fans can fill me in on this. What was the NIL situation there? We know that he he wasn't real keen on going into the portal. We know that that's not what he was known for, and the belief is he's going to change that being here, and that's why the NIL is getting pumped up. So it's not just Cal. It's Cal and it's NIL money that could be some of the deepest we've – well, it's certainly the deepest Arkansas has ever seen, no matter the sport, in the few years that we've had NIL. So it's not just Cal. It's some small, no-money-having, broke-ass school – it's the University of Arkansas right down the road from Walmart, Tyson, J.B. Hunt, George's. The list goes on and on, my friends. And let's not forget, for folks, again, outside of the state, or maybe you're here because you're a Kentucky fan or you're an SEC guy, you're an Ole Miss fan, and you're pissed that, man, they, they didn't get beard, but they ended up with Cal. Why would he go there? Vendors. Vendors. These companies that move here, and they've had to the last 30 years to get closer to Walmart HQ – to get closer to Sam's Club HQ, you got these major vendors coming into the area, and they're hiring local talent. So I'm just telling you, it's not just the Waltons and the JB Hunts and those families we've mentioned a hundred times. You've got big time, big money having pockets in Northwest Arkansas. So, and it, yeah, you could say it's thanks to the Waltons, absolutely, right? But still. Look at the wealth that's been created and how that's spread out through, you know, especially just looking at Bentonville. I mean, it's insane. Fayetteville's got money. We know that. Um, 
It's crazy. And I've been saying this for years, and I thought NIL would really – I thought we'd see this sooner, to be honest with you. It's glad that it that it's finally here. It's glad that the deep pockets are are, and I'm not trying to spend other people's money, right? I, I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, high taxes, and I'm not a big fan of spending other people's money as much as government wants to, uh, and as often as government tries to do. I'm not a big fan of sitting here and telling JB Hunt or the Hunt family how to spend their money, but it is good to see. And, and the Hunts were certainly in the mix. I don't think there's any doubt what these families have done. And it's also not to say that these families haven't come through before. I mean, my God, Tyson has done a lot for the U of A. JB Hunt has done a lot for the U of A. The Waltons have obviously done a lot for the U of A. Again, looking at Bud Walton and and um, and elsewhere, they've had an impact. But now, in the I'm talking about in the age and the era of the NIL really thought that this would, this is what would happen. I just thought it would be sooner, but it's, it's, Hey, it's, it's, you know, it's better now than never. Right. Um, have fun getting even worse results with Scott drew. I like Scott drew. Listen, any coach that goes to Kentucky, you have to look at what they did elsewhere, and then you're probably gonna. It's probably gonna get amplified at Kentucky. I have no disrespect for for the Wildcats. That is a that is the bluest of the blue bloods in college basketball. Mad respect. Uh, I think they got what they. I, I really think the majority of their fan base, not all of them. I know some fans are not happy about it over there, but I think they got what they wanted. They want fresh, younger blood, younger talent to come in, and Arkansas needed someone like this who can who can at least keep the momentum going. You know, yeah, he's 65. We don't know how long he's going to be here. Now, I mean, his contract, it looks like he's here for a minimum of four years, but you know how that all works out. That can be, um, depending on what happens over the next few years, that can always change. But we also have to look at, (laughs) you've got to think about, and I mentioned Sam Pittman earlier when, when I started this stream. If you're Sam Pittman, if you're on the staff at Arkansas, if you're a player, if you're on the roster and you're seeing this kind of money, you're seeing this kind of effort, this kind of energy into basketball, I would hope it would rejuvenate them. However, it might not that might not be the case with everybody. Um, again, this is not me talking. This is not me knowing something from someone who, you know, whatever, something got tossed my way. It's not that at all. It's just me thinking about this. And and I I did, this was a topic of conversation with some folks yesterday at practice. It just kind of makes you wonder. Again, that's all it was. Like, man, I wonder how these, how these players over here, how does Sam Pittman feel about this? Wow. We've got these boosters giving money to, to basketball and there's all this hype and energy and rejuvenation into basketball after coming off a guy like Musselman what does that mean for football? What kind of pressure does this put on, you know, the boosters who primarily give to football? Um, we know the edge, again, I've said it now for a while. I felt like they were behind on edge. They were, they were behind on that kind of crowdfunding, you know. Um, and, and they were. They certainly were. And it was certainly an attempt to get NIL going from, uh, from Hunter and, and, and that team over there. And I, and I think they're doing the best they can. I really do believe that. And I think they're they're trying to alter and fix and, and make necessary changes. And hopefully we're looking at this a couple of years down the road going, wow, Edge was awesome. Edge is awesome. Edge is, I mean, that is, Edge is the future for NIL for crowdfunding. Assuming NIL hasn't had major rule changes, I'm telling you, I think, I think in the next three or four years we're going to see some major changes. Uh, if not from the NCAA, maybe from the conferences themselves. You know, we're we're inching closer and closer to super duper conferences where we may end up with just two or three, and uh, we'll start to resemble more and more like the NFL. I think contracts. I do believe contracts are on their way. I really do. I think within the next five. I mean, that's a big deal. Offering short term contracts to to student athletes is a big deal. And that's, you know, I don't know what kind of. I don't know what kind of legal issues are at hand there, but I do think we're not far away from that sort of stuff uh, from, from offering players short-term contracts worth up to two and three years, probably hundreds of thousands and maybe the stars into the millions, right? We're inching that way. We're getting closer and closer. And I, again, I think within the next 
five to ten years, a lot of you who only are here for the pageantry of college football, you're going to see a major change. I mean, we already have, right, with the portal uh, in uh, NIL. Cal, Cal knew the fan base was crazy. He witnessed it for 15 years, says Mark Yarbrough. <laughs> you guys are tagging me on stuff. What do you got here? Uh, yeah, Mike, I, I'm fully aware. I saw the graphic. It is official. Uh, thank you. Appreciate the uh, DM. Uh scrolling down here yeah we're trying to we're they're trying to figure out a, a, a how you know you had the must bus what do you, what's cal's thing and i'm seeing uh auto johnson posted in discord uh cali cali pig suey uh <laughs> that's that has been recanted oh you guys are going on about some kentucky stuff do y'all remember if must was Put on the jumbotron uh, when he was hired, like they've like they've done for Coach Cal. I don't really, I don't know. K uh, KU basketball never helped KU football though. Online sets, little bit different, little bit different over there because basketball Kentucky is a basketball school through and through. A little bit different scenario, but I do think there's something to be considered about. Uh, you know, if you're a player and this is a, again, we're, we're still kind of in the, in the, we're in the beginning years of what this NIL and, and the portal really is. Like we're in the kind of, we're coming out of the infancy stages and we're getting into the toddler stage of, uh, of NIL. Yeah. I know ads are getting played and I know people hate ads. I mean, I, I get it. I, nothing I can do about it guys. Uh, cow, those hogs. I like that one. I like the cow, those hogs. That one I like. Uh, hit the like button. Hey, Kate. How you doing, Kate? By the way, we got the new names list up. I'm sure you guys saw it at the beginning of the show. It'll obviously roll again at the post at the end of the show. But I appreciate all the Patreon supporters. We did our card giveaway spin last night. We have those names. Harlan uh, Richter. He got the uh, Patrick Wicklander card. We, I've got several of them, so I'm going to give away some more. Uh, Wicklander's dad actually is in our Discord, and he uh, he mailed me those cards. So I've got some more Wicklander cards to give away. Michael Conley got the Jason Peters card. Uh, MJ501 got Steve Little. And John Goodman got the Traylon Burks autographed card. So congrats to those guys. Um, yeah, welcome to all the new members. Welcome to Patreon status. If you guys want to join, you want a shot at a, at a card. The former Arkansas player card. That's what those giveaways are. The former Arkansas player cards. If you want a shot, all you got to do is join Patreon. We do those giveaways every single month. Uh, I still like Cal, Cali, Cal Poultry. This is John Zepecki. Zepecki. Things are so bad on Mildcats chat rooms that they uh, they're over here trying to dull our buzz it ain't happening go away says dave lang (laughs) oh yeah i mean listen it's that's the other part of this too right the rivalry factor how much i mean you know there's some kentucky fans are still butt hurt they're butt hurt that he would even imagine going to arkansas right why how could he how could he Go to Arkansas of all places and not take a job bigger and better. You know, they think lowly of Arkansas, despite Arkansas having more success lately than Kentucky. Hopefully that changes, right? And I, I'm fully aware of who the head coach was at Kentucky when that was happening. I, I do kind of think he was – I think the pressure at Kentucky is different. And, and Wildcat fans would have to admit to that as well. I think the pressure – to perform at Kentucky is different. Now, there's going to be pressure here, especially with all this NIL money. I appreciate everyone who liked and retweeted. appreciate you guys. So we had the uh, Board of Trustees this morning sign off on it. That was pretty cool, pretty neat to see.
JC Hoops tweeted earlier uh, with Arkansas officials expressing no limit to the uh, to the depths of their pocketbooks for for Cal's NIL needs. So I don't know if this is an exact quote. Mason Choate uh, says, and he just tweeted this at 11.06, so not that long ago, the new partnership will include an NIL fund worth at least 5 to $7 million, one industry source said, with Arkansas officials expressing no limit to the depths of their pocketbooks for, for Cal's NIL needs. I mean... <laughs> Everybody's getting in on it, man. And again, I, I I hope this for football. First off, I hope they're happy for those for the for whoever is going to you know make that roster for Arkansas basketball. Um, there's going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of a lot of players that. I mean, Cal's name alone is going to draw heavy interest, and now you've got this NIL backing. So I hope football. And whoever, you know, first off, I hope the donors, uh, whoever's, whoever the major donors are for football, I hope this fires them up a little bit. And I, I think one does affect the other. If you, if you think otherwise, I'm going to tell you right now, you're, <laughs> uh, I don't know, spend some time around the university, okay? Spend some time around the university. I'm going to tell you, it, it, one does affect the other, especially when you're talking about these major NIL funds. Uh, and the same goes with the coaches. I hope that we see some kind of support for football or a boost in NIL for football, uh, including just from fans as well, right? I, I hope we see a boost because I think I think their ceiling is obviously way higher than what we've seen, the last, especially the last several years for Arkansas football. You know, basketball, Musselman returned basketball to its – pretty close to its former glory from the – Eddie Sutton years and the Nolan Richardson years. Why can't football do the same? Now, I, I do agree it is apples and oranges in SEC football. is just it's minor league NFL. Basketball is not at that level. I mean, it's a it's gotten better. I mean, obviously the 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 coaching talent alone in this conference is just asinine. I mean, it's crazy. The level of talent in the SEC has gone through the roof. Those guys at Southeastern 14 will tell you all about that. I plan on getting uh, Blake Lovell on here, if not by the end of this week, maybe next week, getting him in here. I know he's a busy guy right now. But um, I mean, it's not just the Arkansas coaching search. you got UK and, and however that trickles down to the rest of the league. Yeah, I mean, we it, it's, it is, it's apples and oranges. But, man, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like if, if basketball can do it, why can't football? at least from an NIL standpoint, why can't they help build a, a, a Razorback football team that this that fans can get behind like they used to? Fans are going to show up. I don't know how many of you guys are going to show up for the scrimmage on Saturday. I will be there. I'll, I'll be down. I don't, I'm going to be down in the stands. I, uh, that's where I want to be. I'm going to be. I'm going to be down in the stands to watch the scrimmage. If you guys go, feel free. If you see me, say hi. I, I don't mind talking a little – Little little Arkansas sports with you. Uh, Mike says it's about damn time. Yeah. Thinking Cal will make the football team better while Kentucky hasn't been good in one. Oh, that's wrong. I mean, didn't – wasn't Stoops – hold on. What what happened just not that long ago at Kentucky football? What I'm – and, again, if that's aimed at me, I don't know if it is or not. I'm suggesting that if this rubs off, the NIL, if it rubs off, maybe for basketball it'll rub off on football. And maybe that could help. Uh, why not? I mean, I, again, I, I've, you know, it, you, don't have to be a, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to know that when you've got this kind of money involved and these guys are on campus together, these guys cross paths, they have mutual friends, don't sit here and act like, nah, that's not going to have any effect. I mean, come on, of course it is. Um, speaking of butthurt Kentucky fans, how you doing Cowboys do complain? Arkansas in a better spot with basketball, with Texas and uh, Oki entering football. You have to compete with, with, uh, with too many to think we can consistently win 10 games. Yeah. And I don't think that's what anybody's asking. Arkansas's never done that on a consistent level, winning 10 games a year. You did it back-to-back in 2010, 2011, but 
you know, I, I, I certainly believe that or I hope anyways, that, that NIL you'll see what's happening with basketball and we'll get a similar effect with football. Maybe it doesn't. That's all I'm saying is it's, it's worth keeping an eye on. I don't know if it does or not. It may not. This may encourage everyone to just give to basketball and not football at all. And then just maybe from here on out, we are simply a basketball baseball school. Maybe that's what you've always been, right? I mean, that's certainly what outsiders will tell you. I do know that Arkansas fans want to be a football school. Ty, throw a party. (laughs) I don't know about all that. Uh, Cal's an elite recruiter. But does he recruit too well to win a natty? Says Mr. Runner. I don't really know what that means. Uh, yeah, I think Cowboys don't complain is really, you're coming off like a butthurt Kentucky fan, man. I mean, listen, you guys are going to go out and get someone, regardless if you agree or disagree with what I believe could or couldn't happen. Again, I'm not saying that it will. I'm saying I hope it does. I'm saying that I hope that the NIL has an effect with football as well. I'm hoping that some donor comes through and sees what's possible as far as, you know, other deep pockets getting involved and maybe that'll encourage them. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, again, I don't know where you're getting, unless you're talking to somebody else in chat, I don't know where you're getting that I'm saying that that's going to, that it will 100% affect football and the NIL funds. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I hope that it does. But you're coming off like a butt hurt Kentucky fan right now. So just FYI. You're going to get dragged in chat if you keep going. I'm just going to say, I'm not condoning it. Please keep it civil. Don't go at anybody. Mr. T-Dub with the $5 Super Chat. Boosters, admin, et cetera, just said we're a basketball school. And I mean, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? Uh, it looks like it looks like they, they've given up on football, at least for now. And seeing that's a part of that perception. That's a part of the optics. If you think the fans, listen, T-Dub is saying that. You're going to sit here and tell me that football, that guys on the roster, that coaches aren't feeling something similar? I'm just saying. And so I hope because of that, the outcome is donors come through for football. That's it. Uh, Ty, any rumors on players and coaches coming with Cal? Not yet. I think we're going to start hearing stuff probably as soon as this week. Uh, maybe even tonight. Who knows? After the announcement and inside Bud Walton Arena. As bad as Pelfrey, Heath, and Anderson were at times, man, Anderson wasn't all bad, to be fair. Uh, they were never given the the kind of setback hires that Chad Morris was for the football program. Basketball hasn't had that kind of nuclear mess to clean. Yeah, you're not entirely wrong there. I mean, Mike Anderson, it was because of Mike Anderson's ability to rebuild, to make Arkansas a semi-attractive job, not a deep tournament team at the time. That's not what they were when Mike Anderson left. We were hoping he could at least advance past the second round once. Of course, North Carolina had a lot to say about that. But he at least, I mean, you got the indoor facility, you got the upgrades to Bud Walton Arena, fan interest came back to a degree, and he left Arkansas in, in, a, in better shape than, than where he found it, right? That paved the way. I know Musk was not the very first premium choice, but that paved the way to bring in a guy like Musselman who did have a really nice resume when you're talking about the NBA and his short time in Nevada. I don't know after Pelfrey you would attract someone like Musselman. Musselman's not a dumb guy, okay? He knows, he gets it, high mind, high basketball mind, high IQ. He gets it. He wanted to go somewhere where he felt pretty confident that he could you know, help rebuild a program. That's what he's going to do at USC, right? I think he's attracted to a certain type of job. But I think, too, it had to have a certain level of, of capability. So Mike Anderson helped build that initial that initial, you know, part of the, of the rebuild that Musselman would eventually build on top of. Musselman does that. He gets Arkansas to a level we haven't seen in a while, makes the job even more attractive. I don't know if you'd gone with anybody else other than Musselman if Cal would have still considered the job. I know he's friends with Tyson. I know he's friends with that family. I know he loves the area, and, and I, you know, I'm assuming his wife does. I don't know, but I, I get that. But I don't know 
had Arkansas not gotten back to, you know, three straight Sweet 16s and back-to-back Elite 8s, back to what the expectations used to be coming from Eddie Sutton and Nolan Richardson, right? It wasn't just Nolan. Let's not forget, Sutton did his part too, right? And you, you, you went and you grabbed an up-and-coming coach in Nolan Richardson who would ultimately turn Arkansas into a, a powerhouse for, for a while. So saying all that to say, Mike Anderson, this started with Mike. This started with Jeff Long bringing Mike Anderson in. And, yeah, again, I'm with you guys. I'm with a lot of people who, who will tell you that, yeah, but Mike underperformed. He, he never – he underachieved. We never really got to the level we thought we were going to get. What, he, what we've seen him do at other jobs, we never really got that. But you got to remember what things were like before. We were talking about Pelfrey and Stan Heath. So Mike built that original foundation. Musselman built on top of that. And now you've got Cal And we'll see if Cal – we'll see how that works out. We'll see if he's able to – to build a mansion on top of it, right? But this all started with Mike. And then you could also argue it started with Hunter Yurchak bringing in Musselman too, which is valid. But I don't know that, again, you attract a guy. I mean, Musselman, I don't think, would have left Nevada for just any job. Out leaving out west. Remember that his family is out west, leaving all that behind. Uh, and we know we got five years out of him. Four of them really good. Three of them really, really good. So maybe Cal can – at the very least, get you back to that where the expectations are elite eight or better, you know, and then whatever happens, happens. I don't know. NIL is certainly there. I don't know that the NIL, if Kentucky matched that NIL or not. I don't know what is. I mean, we know he probably had some some money to work with, but I don't know that he had this kind of money. I really don't. I mean, if we're talking what they say, north of four to five million dollars in NIL, <laughs> that's absurd. So. Who knows where this goes, man, but I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. I'll be here covering it all. I have no plans to change. I have no plans of covering anything else. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for giving Mike Anderson the kudos. Oh, absolutely. It's it's T-Y, by the way, not T-Y-E. <laughs> That's Ty. That's the skinnier, luscious, blonde locks, Ty Richardson, T-Y-E. I'm the tall, fat, brown, luscious locks, Ty Hudson with a T-Y. Uh, Mike Anderson is a gentleman. I, I really always want the best for him. Mike is uh, – I am I am, a, I am biased towards Mike Anderson, and I, and I hate that things didn't work out the way. I, I really wish it had been a, a – a, he had left with more success. But, again, you got to give him credit. He did – this started with Mike. Uh, our players will be coming to games in their private helicopters. <laughs> hey, I wanted to show you guys something really quick. We uh we got a we got a we got a new mascot for the show. Oh, come here, buddy. Oh, come here, buddy. Oh, let's introduce little Merlin. This is don't pee on me, please. This is Merlin. If you could see him, oh, buddy, he's eight weeks old. Oh, got him in here with me. He's been hanging out. He uh, he has not made a mess in the house yet. He actually, my wife let him out this morning, and he actually he did his business outside. So this is Merlin. Hey, buddy. Oh, oh. Isn't he just sweet? I can't stand it. He's so sweet. He's just been sitting here. Uh, I've got a little bed made for him right here next to me. He's just been sitting here sleeping the whole time. I hope he does that forever. Well, you know what I mean. Like, just easy to deal with. All right, buddy. Say bye. I'm going to put you down. Oh, isn't he just precious? I, I, w- I wanted to name him. I had several names after I was thinking about it. Gandalf. Uh, I wanted to name him Gandalf. I mean, I am a big nerd. Link was a name that came up. I never played Zelda, but Link was a pretty cool name. But we settled on on Little Merlin. Merlin Miles Hudson. All right. Uh, okay, that is gonna that is going to do it. I appreciate you guys. Remember, on your way out, help support a local business, a local YouTube channel that covers your Razorbacks. That's Tuss Talk with Ty. So you could do that by either joining Patreon following or uh, uh, joining patreon joining discord 
sharing the content, and subscribing. That's how you help. That's how you help. There's a lot of (laughs) – we're getting big dogs in the space now. And so, you know, I need all the the help I can get over here covering your Razorbacks. But I, I enjoy doing it. Um, and so shout out to the current Patreon supporters. We, we did the card giveaway for next, for this month, this month. If you are a legendary status member, you've got a shot at a former Arkansas player. That's Alex Collins autographed. You gotta be legendary status for that card. And there's going to be some more cards, a part of that giveaway as well. And that, again, that's for this month, the month of April. Um, what is this quote? What is this? Hold on. What are we reading here? From Cal, the other thing to change is figuring out our roster. And you have to go in now and, and have NIL ready, which the school will do. I don't have I don't have to go out and do and do it anymore. I had to I had to at Kentucky. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what he does. I'm excited. The transfer portal is gonna be wild. Recruiting high school is gonna be wild. I'm excited for it. And again, I hope you guys are as well. That's gonna do it for me. I will probably be back by Friday. By the way, the game today, baseball game was moved up. I don't know that it happens, but don't quote me on that. What did they move that up to, 1 o'clock? I think the baseball game's been moved to to 1. I think they probably end up canceling it, but, you know, I don't want to put that that voodoo on you. I don't want to put that – I know we're excited. You know, we got all this positive – we want Arkansas sports. We'd love to see them – play tonight but or today rather at 1 p.m but i don't know if it's going to happen i guess we'll just have to keep up with the weather okay i will more than likely see you guys again on friday and uh, of course you know i'll be here saturday for a post scrimmage review it might be a walk it might be a huff and puff i don't do walk and talk that's trey biddy's thing my thing is the huff and puff so maybe (laughs) maybe that's what you'll see me doing i'll do the huff and puff um after the scrimmage. So I will see you either Friday or Saturday. You guys have a good, good rest of your Wednesday and Thursday. And maybe, maybe I'll see you at the end of the week. All right. Okay. I'll see you guys then.